Hello, hello, and welcome to a new episode of Ramblings from Two Meddling Kids. I'm Edward Hunt, joined by my fellow fairy folk, Mike Cunningham, and we are the Meddling Kids. We like to review movies. Today, we'll be reviewing The Watchers. For those of you joining us for the first time, welcome. It's good to have you here. For those of you who've come back before, good to see you again. I guess we don't have to watch you much longer. Uh, but yeah, don't worry, we won't spoil anything. Let's call it the first... 10 15 minutes or so we'll give you some spoiler free reviews as well as some background then we'll get into a little bit more of a play-by-play -play and then start talking about everything so the watchers mike are you ready i am all right what'd you give this thing Two. okay um, i so to be honest and be transparent i think the first time i saw this trailer it looked interesting like the premise and i think that's what was the hook the premise but also like I guess trying to look forward in time or trying to guess what the actual, what the twist was going to be or what the movie was going to be about. Mm -hmm. I had a sneaking suspicion that it was going to be about uh, social media and like a very, uh, like okay. a very artistic take on social media and like having mm -hmm. watchers and views. And I was just like, bro, please, not, please no. <laughs> like, yeah. And so uh, like, I did go in a little biased, but I, I put that, I put that to the side. Like that was my prediction trying to be, trying to be like fucking Nostradamus. But, um, I think I put that that bias to the side to really give this movie a chance. And so I went in kind of like, just let's see what this is. Because like I said, I think the premise was very interesting. It was like, mm -hmm. you, get, you get these people in this room. We don't know how they got there. And I was surprised even the movie started out the way it did. Because I, I, I assumed it, it was just going to be just the room. But it was interesting. Yeah. Well, obviously, the premise is like, some people are trapped in this room. You don't know how they got here. And there's people watching them. And I was like, that that can go in so many different directions. I'm, I was curious to see how it went. But I think this movie was very much a slow burn um, to an unsatisfying ending. Uh, so, or it took very long to get to answer any questions, which is a bit frustrating. I don't know if it was like trying to build some suspense or tension, but it was like, it didn't do that for me. It was just like, what what's going on? Like, let, let me in. <laughs> so it's like, I was I was a bit frustrated with that. Also, like, it's a very fairly short movie, but it seemed a lot longer. And I don't know if that's just a cinematic technique to make you feel like you're also in the room with them well again, mm -hmm. i might be giving the movie a lot of credit but, um, i think yeah so like, i think it was a i think it, it flopped on it's with, like the, a promising premise to me i think the performances were fine there was nothing to really write home about I, it wasn't anything like masterful or anything mm -hmm. like that, but it was like it was it were terrible performances either like it was very very mid i think the cinematography was great i think the storytelling and like I said, it was very interesting. It was a very interesting story, and I was waiting for it to be broken down and to to, to to get a peek behind the curtain of what what it was going to be. Um, mm -hmm. But it just, I don't think it didn't, for me personally, it didn't deliver. I think I really, I did enjoy kind of the creature designs a bit, like me finally get to see them. I mm -hmm. think kind of like uh, Shyamalan, obviously her dad, uh, not her, but like Shyamalan's, uh, what is it? Uh, the Village. What is it? Mm -hmm. You know, when you finally get to see the creatures, I think maybe they were kind of unsatisfying in that one. But this one, I was like very much anticipating uh, what the creature was going to look like. And I think it was, it, that did like live up to the hype, I will say. I think I, I thought it was an interesting design. But all in all, I think it was just very much a a bland movie. I, I don't, I think it, when it decided to get into the actual um, interesting parts, it one, it took too long. And then by that point, it, it, even when it got there, it was just like, oh, this wasn't really anything great. But I will say it is, it's, it's director's first, um, mm -hmm. it's directorial debut type of thing. So like, there's nowhere to go but up. I'm, yeah. well, I kind of see what she does if she kind of breaks away from her dad. Because he was like, he produced this movie. Um, I assume financed it as well because I couldn't get anything on a budget. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, I, I, I'm, I am curious, like in the past two or three years, it's been, it has been very interesting to see a lot of directors first attempts in their future films and like kind of see where they go from there. We have seen some great directorial debuts like Polite Society and um, yeah. What Is It Talk To Me and stuff like that. So um, I'm interested to see where she goes. But like this movie, I think it had her out of promise. It just didn't really live up to it. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a two for me. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm giving it a one and a half. Uh, it was, I'm going even a little worse. It, I will say, I, I don't think I was kind of excited for this movie because it's Ishana Night Shyamalan's directorial debut. It's M. Night Shyamalan's daughter, you know, so it's kind of like, you know, in her blood of sorts, she's been around in this environment for a long time. So I was really excited to see what she was going to come up with or come out with for this first movie. And I was just very disappointed. The good parts 
you know, let's do a compliment sandwich. Uh, so the good parts, you know, she can shoot some good scenes, but like from like the cinematography perspective, there were some good elements there. Um, and the mythos was promising, but I think it failed on the mythos. It failed a little bit on the twist. It failed on the resolution. The, the characters to me felt clunky and just kind of random of this, like, and like not random. They just weren't like, it had this movie had the makings of a movie without just being it. Like for instance, you're like, okay, you got um Georgina Campbell's character. I'm blanking on her name right now, but she's oh, like Kira. Kira. Which one? Kira? Sierra. Sierra, yeah. I dance. I'm a dancer. That came out of like left field and nowhere, and then it was just kind of awkward. And I love Georgina Campbell because she was a uh, phenomenal in Barbarian. She's been in great movies. You know, so to see her not really utilized in a good way was a little like ah. um I will say, yeah, the creature design, the fairies, that was interesting. You know, it was a, even from there, you know, there was an interesting premise, but it was silly. Like, why are you in here? Are you telling me that, like, Google Maps is taking you through this wooded forest area, and then, like, it's just going to fail? So literally thousands of people are dying every day like this yeah. because it's Google Maps. So it was just the setup to get to this point was weird. We didn't get the full resolution. I know that the, you know, Dakota Fanning's character, Nina, had her issues and she had like a traumatic past, but that wasn't even fully fleshed out and like, a, it didn't feel like a good resolution with the end there. Yeah, it was just across the board. Then, yeah, when the other character, Daniel, I'm just like, what? They just, it felt kind of manufactured and I just wasn't that impressed. I was never really scared. It was a couple parts where I was like, ooh, the build-up, but it never really got there. And yeah, it was, the movie was just a huge disappointment for me, uh, and as a whole, and then as you said, Mike, like, it felt long. Like, when we saw that movie, and like, we were getting out, I was like, oh, it must be like nine o'clock, you know, <laughs> we must have been in that movie theater for like two, two and a half hours. That movie felt long, and it was just... Yeah, I'm excited. I still, I want to see what, you know, Ishana comes out with next. I'm still going to be excited for it because it, it is nowhere else but up. Um, and there's some makings of it. You know, there's some makings of some potential great movies, but I really hope she takes this movie, learns a lot from it, and I'm excited to see what she comes up with next because I was not impressed. So one and a half out of five for me, unfortunately. And I wanted it to be good. I did. I was like, yeah, but no. <laughs> yeah, so sorry, y'all. Cool. Let's get some background on this thing. I know we talked about the uh, director, but what else do we have? <laughs> yeah. So The Watchers uh, came out on June 7th, 2024. His runtime is an hour and 42 minutes. Could, like I said, I couldn't find anything on the budget, but the box office projection for the first week is about 8 to 10 million. It's a little okay. sad. I think it made like a, it's already made like a million, so mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll see. Like I said, yeah. I don't think Austin Warren, I, Warren Moss, you know, might, um, might doom this one because right yeah. now the Rotten Tomatoes, as of today, once again, it came out yesterday, but as of today, it's a 31 for for critics and 51 for audiences. Yeah, that's um, true. and the genre. So I didn't. Re so initially, I thought it was like horror mystery, but I forgot it's, it's also, also fantasy. fantasy. And mm -hmm. obviously, you get that there. And it was just. Uh, I think it was a weird combination of genres, right? It like it didn't give you any, even though it's like a secret forest, I guess, in a way. But it didn't give you fantasy for the most part. So mm -hmm. like them adding that fantasy element to it kind of took you out of it. And it made it kind of silly. Now, if yeah. I knew I was in a fantasy film, like Lord of the Rings or some shit like that, fine. This is what we mm -hmm. are. But I think this movie was very much grounded, and then you throw in fantasy out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so the director, Tishana Nike Shaman. <laughs> I don't know why it's so funny to me. I, I thought yeah. Mike was his, no, whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but Shana Nike Shyamalan is her director that you she, previously she'd been like the uh, second unit director of Old and Mock of the Cat and her father's last two films. And then I think she was also a writer and director on a few episodes of Servant. I think some show on Apple TV or some shit like that or Apple Plus. Yeah. Um, so, like, yeah, she, I, like you said, I think she grew up and is very much following in her father's footsteps. Um, yeah. Oh, so I, know. I just slightly remember it. I forgot that M. Night Shyamalan did knock at the cabin. You know what I mean, Dora? Yeah, I, I like that movie. I thought that was a good movie. So, like, yeah. So, <laughs> I, my, 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 my joke about that one is like the twist of that movie since it's a Shyamalan movie. <laughs> that the book was better. But, yeah. I mean, yes, yeah, the book was better. But, okay, so he did old, which was based on a book. He did knock <laughs> at the cabin, which was based on a book. Apparently, Watchers is also based on a book. It was like, God, please, yeah. something original, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're not able to. Yeah, <laughs> at least you're not able to 
properly interpret these these mm-hmm. words. Please just do something original. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, it makes um, six sense, you know, like you know, not to hard well, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so yeah, it's Shaman Night Shyamalan is director of the cast. We have Dakota Fanning as Nina, Georgina Campbell as uh Ciara. I don't know why I have Clara here, but Ciara as okay. I'll look it up again. Uh, Oliver Finnegan as Daniel Owen Aforve, excuse me, as uh Madeline uh, Alistair Brommer as John and John Lynch as the professor. So very small cast for the most part. And yeah. then the tagline is uh they are watching. That they most certainly are. <laughs> oh, awesome. Thank you for the background. Like, uh, we're about to start getting into our spoiler section, but a quick word from our sponsors before we do. Hey, what's going on? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm Edward Hunt. I'm on the Milan Baddington team of Compass. Uh, we are officially the number one real estate team after last year, uh, for Compass and the DMV. So that's pretty great. Uh, but it's more about just helping you buy or sell homes, or you know, which we always can do, and I can give you advice on the market. But I want to be your number one resource for anything home related. So if it is you need contractors, a handyman, if you need anything uh, for like financing or lenders, I can connect you with some amazing people and always help out that way. Also, I'm Edward Hunt of uh, Hunt Comics. Evil is a Weapon issue one is on Amazon. And uh, you can also order from my website, edwardhuntready.com. And we should have a Kickstarter up for issue two shortly. Uh, I'm just... I think in about a week and a half, my alt cover should be done. And then, so in the meantime, I'm going to be getting a campaign set up and then we'll have another campaign. Mike, you have something fun going on. What's happening? Yes. Yeah, so I started it this week, the um, push up challenge, um, this organization called push up, I uh, sorry, push for better. Um, basically it's an organization supporting uh, men's mental health and uh, suicide prevention. So uh, for the month of June or for the next 22 days, I guess. I'll be um trying to trying to do three thousand four hundred and twenty nine push ups. How many push ups are you also at so Currently, far? Currently, I am at I'm on this is day three. I've done a total of one hundred and seventy something. Okay, you're getting there. You're yeah. awesome. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> this is okay. Like I'll, I'll put it up. I'll put it up in the episode. Like you can join, you can donate, um, or just you know join along to to do, to do the push ups as well. It's, it's interesting because that was just throw random numbers at you each day. Yeah, so you would you, know, you would think they just scatter it out with the twenty four. But it was like the first day it was fifty two. Yesterday it was one hundred and ten. Today it's one hundred and twenty three. Randomly, so interesting. You never yeah. know how many push ups you're gonna be forced to do. But yeah. also, they like if you can't do all the push ups, they also give you alternatives with squats and step ups and like different. It's just I think it's very much just like pushing people to be healthier, both mm-hmm. uh, physically and mentally. Something I did last year with my little sister, and like I'm doing it this year again. So, yeah, um, and that, that explains that healthy glow you have going on right now. Your pecs are kind of bursting out of the screen a little bit. So, yeah, I, I see it. Absolutely. Yeah, I haven't done three dollars of full stuff since last year. It's like, <laughs> <it's chill. laughs> oh, actually, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. I also have t-shirts. Besides, uh, this is my cover for issue one. So, yeah, you can buy a t-shirt on uh, my website as well. But I just realized when I stressed that I'm wearing a shirt. But, yeah, no. Cool. Awesome. All right. Let's get into this. So the watchers, as Mike said, a lot of social media, it's a message about how watching things can lead to watching more things. Yes. Right. Also, yeah. one, one thing to know, it was like, right. I feel like they had a big thing on twins and I guess duality or some shit like that, but it was like, it wasn't, it didn't pay off. Well, no, we'll, we'll get into it, but yeah. they kept <laughs> fuck with me. I was like, what does that matter? What, what, yeah. what does that truly matter in this? Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, sorry. We'll be <laughs> <No. on. laughs> so, this guy just like running through the woods. Uh, he made it to like a marker that says, I think, um, oh, fucking, what did the sign say? Uh, uh point of no return. return. Yeah. 108, I think yeah. was that one. Yeah. 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 So it was like point of no return, 108. So clearly a sign. He starts running, uh, like here. Obviously, he's like frantic. It's a dark forest. Like you see a, a bunch of like birds, like uh, heading in a certain direction or whatever. And you hear like some type of creature, creature. following after him. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought this was a very like it was very intense uh, and a, a tense opening to a, to a film. So I was like I was you know fairly impressed with this. But it was just like so he um, he's running. Uh, I think he realizes that he needs to like get higher, get to higher ground, either to protect him from the the beast that's following him or to just kind of see where he's going through the trees. And so he starts climbing a tree. And then he uh, accidentally uh, slips and falls to the ground. Um, I think he, like, breaks his arm or something like that. Or at least dislocates his shoulder, excuse me. He looks in um, pain, for sure. Yeah, yeah that's what it is, yeah. <laughs> Falling from 20 feet apparently is painful. I, I guess, whatever. Yeah. And, yeah, so, like, he crawls to his backpack to get a knife, I guess, to protect himself. And he, like, kind of, um, even though he can't stand, he might have also hurt his leg as well. Mm-hmm. Um, he can't stand, but he has, like, a knife to protect himself. And then we just see a creature, like, come up and attack him. 
and he sees the creature and he says that's impossible and i'm like that's interesting too because once again i know we're not going to see this creature for at least 45 to an hour like yeah <laughs> i know it's been okay a minute before i see it but it was interesting his reaction right it wasn't like all out fear mm-hmm. which gave you that led me to believe like okay what is this creature like is it I assume, like, right from the jump, oh, it must look very much like us, possibly, type of thing. Yeah. Um, well, that's, but, yeah, like, as, like, as openings go, I mean, like, I think most good horror movies should have, like, a nice, good, cold open to, like, <laughs> kind of give you a kick of what's going to happen. And, like, it, and she, you know, Shana Campbell does well, or Shana Campbell, Virginia Campbell, <laughs> Shana Shana, um, does well of, like, starting with this open and then to give you some of that mystique because that's with any good monster movie you don't want to see what the monster looks like too early so like you get this like mystery and everything going on and that was like it was a good start for this for sure so i was like okay maybe there will be some good stuff happening here yeah so he says he sees the creature says that's impossible and he just gets dragged into this um what do they call it like a burrow like a burrow hole. Yeah. yeah a big old hole yeah and so <laughs> then we i think it just jumps and we get the title screen that says the watchers um, yeah. And then we jump to we meet Nina, the who works at a pet store in Ireland. Also, sorry, I think the film did open up like it was a sweeping shot of the forest, and I heard narration about the specific forest in Ireland and how like people go missing and don't return type of thing. I who was narrating this? The, I assume it was Mina. Yeah. Why would she narrate this? You know what I mean? Because that's the thing. Well, but that's, that's what I've realized, and this is like a pet peeve of mine for storytelling in general. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, books across the board um is if some if anything is going to be first person or there's going to be a narration of some sort you better make sure i know why they're narrating mm-hmm. at some point in time yeah, what's, like, the, what's the context of the storytelling exactly because right? like, yeah it's the way that they are was uh, that movie the president bride obviously you're being the grandfather's telling the kid a story so it was like okay that perfect. makes sense Perfect yeah. setup. That's literally why the Princess Bride is such. Well, well there's mm-hmm. a billion reasons why it's such a good yeah. movie, but it, it makes so much sense of why everything just it's so it wraps up with a nice bow. Like, who's she talking to now? Did she know this before yeah. she went into the woods? I guess you're right. The same way with a lot of like a found footage stuff, and it was just like, who's watching? It? Like, who was the audience to this? Yeah. It can't yeah. just be the the movie goer yeah. type of thing. Well, so that's why, like, found footage, I kind of like because it is kind of like, oh, someone found it, and then yeah. also, so it. it should be like that often time it doesn't make sense sometimes mm-hmm. when they shoot it no for sure yeah yeah but it's and it's like the stuff like that because yeah i've read short stories recently um where what was it? it was like someone is like telling first person the entire way and then they die at the end and i'm like so how did i find out this story it's not like you were writing down notes like why do i know that you died man mm-hmm. like you you're, like i can't read your mind yeah so that's it's nitpicky. It's nitpicky is how I recognize that. But it is something for me that I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So we meet Nina. She's a, uh, she's working at a pet shop um, in Ireland. Her boss tells her that uh, a certain bird needs to be delivered um, to, I can't remember where, where exactly. It's right somewhere that's like a day's drive away or something like that. So she takes the bird to her house or whatever. And like she's talking, for some reason she's talking to it. This is one talking about pet peeves. One of my big thing, one of my big gripes with Shyamalan, mm-hmm. not I night, yeah. uh, him night Shyamalan recently is um, he seems to be getting worse at um, dialogue. Mm-hmm. And like so, in old it was like you had, in order to exposit the information about the characters, you had a little boy saying, "What's your name and what do you do." No yeah. little kid would fucking do that. What are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so right. was yeah. like he didn't know any other way. Than mm-hmm. to, Get, is that you know, like express this? <laughs> um, and so, like, even even with uh, uh, Mina telling the bird, that was like it's her. Um, it's the fifteenth anniversary of her mother's death, or something like that. It was just like I feel like there there might have been other ways to display that information. Mm-hmm. Um, even like because you get she gets a call from her sister. It was like that could have been it. I don't know why she's talking directly to the bird about it. It made yeah. no sense. Uh, but yeah, so she's. Um, for some reason, she goes out that night, meets a guy, um, but I felt like it plays into nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess we do see her, um, maybe, I'm only pointing it out now because I'm realizing that's what I'm saying. I think we see her um, put on a wig as if it's a kind of a, like a disguise. Mm-hmm. And like she explains to the birds, like, sometimes I do that just to be someone else type of thing. And I think that might play into later, I guess, with mm-hmm. the story, but not really. But anyway. Yeah. Because I think they do give you inklings about who this person is in, in a way to, like, 
uh, I guess, throw some mystery to mean? her character type of thing. And I'll explain it a little bit later. But, like, so, yeah, she goes out, she comes home, and then, like, the next day she's off, like, delivering the bird. And during the drive, we get her. She, she has a voicemail from her sister um, who says that, that, you know, the uh, Nina missed the memorial uh, service for her mother's, like, an, the, 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 the anniversary of her mother's death. And she talks about how, like, um, she has uh, sons. Um, they've gotten bigger or whatever. And she's driving through this, like, this forest. I guess at this point, she's not driving through the forest. She's driving, like, on the road, but it's, like, alongside the forest. Like, the forest is to her right or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, we do see her, once again, another hint at who this person is. It was like we see her uh, listening back to the voicemail and kind of mimicking her sister's voice. Yeah. And like I said, I think this, alongside with the wig thing, was, like, kind of her playing someone else type of thing. Playing later into, like, what the movie would eventually uh, evolve into so i thought maybe that was possibly well, you know? it, it, it could have been <laughs> i mean like i think like this could have that's why like this movie had like great elements where it's like oh okay. but like it just the payoff the build-up had no payoff right you see that mm -hmm. and you're like who is this weird creepy girl you know at this point mm -hmm. who's like listening to voicemail and repeating along with it and like putting on a wig and like saying she likes to act you know and also saying like you wouldn't like me i'm a bad person and stuff like that and like you, know, you can see there's a lot of like from this character like there's a lot of self-loathing self -loathing because she blames herself for what happens earlier and we'll mm -hmm. get into that later but like the whole creepiness payoff to then that doesn't there wasn't really a payoff being that what happened like, hell maybe she's some kind of creepy murdery monster you know mm -hmm. what i mean like that yeah. could have been cooler you know what i mean like had like something like that in here too but i digress yeah so um she continues her drive or whatever and now like you said randomly she was literally driving through a forest and i was just like okay there, there's no way the gps took you this <laughs> this way I mean, there's literally not a road but like as she's driving and she goes a little bit further we see like the phone kind of glitch out because it's mm -hmm. losing service apparently and then the car just like breaks down. So she gets out. Um, she looks around for a bit. Sure. Quick question. And this is really, you're not going to know this, but this is for the audience at home. If you're familiar with Ireland, are a lot of roads in Ireland like this? Is this is why she just drove through here to this city that it, it becomes random forest where there's no actual paved road? It wasn't like that in Scotland. Maybe it's like that in Ireland. I don't know. But like, otherwise, what? But yeah, so car breaks down. Sorry, <laughs> car breaks down. She gets out. She looks like surveys the area first, and then looks at the car. See so like the engine smoking, and so she grabs the bird and starts walking because she sees a sign that says "Point of No Return." I can't remember the number, maybe eighty nine or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then she assumes once again talking to the bird uh, that there's there must be a house or something nearby. And so she starts walking away from the car, and then she turns around and sees that the car is no longer there. Mm -hmm. And it just uh, there's, she can't see the road either. It's just like more forest. Yeah. Right? So she run your back. She's confused. She keeps walking. Keeps walking. Keeps walking. Um, and she realizes she's walking for a while. And she doesn't know. She can't get her bearings. And she takes a break and like was once again she's talking to the bird, and she says, "I'm gonna name you Darwin because if I'm gonna die out, if we're gonna die out here, I should you should at least have a name." I'm sure that's the why she named it Darwin. Evolution. Yeah. yeah that one. Um, but uh, yeah, so she continues walking in the forest. It's like very ominous, very creepy. I think we see uh, some, like she gets not attacked by birds, but kind of birds like kind mm -hmm. of swarm her for a bit. And then when that happens, she sees like just a woman uh, with white hair in the forest kind of watching her. And yeah. then that woman starts to run away. Mina starts to follow her. The woman gets to like this house and um, she holds the door open and she says, if you want to survive, you, you want to gonna, gonna keep uh, running. And, and so like Mina kind of stands up for a bit and then the woman starts counting down from five. And mm -hmm. Mina does hear um, t something following her in the forest. She can't see it, but she can hear some type of beast or some creature following her. So yeah. she runs into the, into the house and a woman named Madeline introduces her to, introduces herself and it introduces the two other people, the two other occupants of the the bunker or whatever that they call it, they call it the coop. It's, it just, as I think a stone structure, a stone house, there's just kind of one room with like a table, a couch and a TV. And then like this large, like it's like four walls, 
like three of them stone and then one just this huge glass and like it's uh i guess it's one way because they can't see out but mm -hmm. whoever is on the other side can see in and um she introduced the woman madeline introduced herself Tiara and daniel and they kind of like tell her we'll we'll get you um up to speed on what's going on here they tell her to stand they all stand in a row um because they are uh, coming to watch and then so when they stand in a row madeline tells mina to step forward and you, she just hears something that sounds like thunder like and it's just, she's like what is that and it's like oh that's applause mm -hmm. and they're like they're applauding you or whatever and so we don't get much about the who they are when mina calls them the watchers and it was i think this movie was very interesting because it kind of it rushed into like she was in the bunker i want to say less than 15 10 to 15 minutes it was, like, it, was, like, it was fairly it rushed into it's what we are fairly quickly mm -hmm. like once again which was interesting in the fact that from then on this movie seemed really long but it was like it started out so fast yeah uh, a question for you with the applause now knowing at the end what these things are would they really applaud someone coming in like that you know that? Think, oh yes i think it's one of those things like you know what their their purpose yeah. having another one fair. would help their uh, ultimate goal yeah, I just, it's I, fair. I just, I, you know, since we've seen them, picturing them all standing there, you know, shy <laughs> of us style applauding, I'm just like, that's not <laughs> I'm not that. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I don't know, but fair. Okay, fair. <laughs> Especially since they had just lost, you know, one part. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, true. They just lost Johnny Boy. But yeah, so then she, if they introduce her to the, the concept of, uh, they're kind of, not all the rules, but mainly one of them is, as long as you do what you're told, like nothing will happen to you type of thing, you'll, you'll survive. And so we see her, um, I think we learned that was his name was Sierra was a dancer or something like that, like ballet. I think, uh, Madeline was a professor, a history, like a history professor or something like that. So she's our in all like learning all about, like you do notice that she's the one telling them the rules, um, and how to go about, um, continuing to survive in the bunker and things like that um and then i can't remember i don't know what daniel did i can't remember but once, yeah. I think, like you said i think a lot of these characters are very much um one one-dimensional and then like kind of un like not unforgettable but forgettable yeah um, yeah, yeah daniel was the weird kid you know who yeah. was like both weird and not weird and then like his confession later came out of left field and i'm like okay like <laughs> thank you for thank you for sharing daniel it, like, yeah. it's traumatic but thank you but yeah and then we see, like, uh, as they're sitting there, because there's really nothing to do in the bunker at all, uh, we see that there's a TV in the corner, and I think they have, like, this DVD of some, some fucking Big Brother-esque type yeah. show. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, the based in... Layer. Uh, yeah. It was the Love Layer season three. Yeah, it was like, and once again, it's like, this movie tried so hard to be, like, deep, and it was like, oh, it's, like, it's, it's so meta in its way, because it was like... They watch you so about people being watched. Yeah. As they're being what I was like, oh my God. Okay, fine. We get it. You're smart. Cool. Well, you, you know, I think with, they need to pick their lane and stick with it. I think, right. Right? you know, it's because it was like, great. Either you are here and like this is the commentary on reality TV and everything like that, or it's a gothic psychological creature horror. Yeah. Like, don't do both because both yeah. gets messy and weird. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, we learned that they're allowed to go out during the day because the creatures, whatever they, the watchers are, uh, can't exist in sunlight. So like they sleep during the day and mm -hmm. only come out at night. So that means that the people that are occupants of the coop can go outside during the day to forage for food. Uh, we see, uh, what's her name? Uh, Sierra picking like different flowers, like so she can make different like sows because like, we see that Daniel definitely has like um, neurological issues or something like that. So it's like she's very much there to kind of make sure he stays calm and stuff like that. Um, and so the first day that they're allowed to go, like the, the I guess the next day, uh, Mina's like, I, I don't, I shouldn't be here type of thing. Like, so she tries to run away. I can't remember what exactly happened. Like, this, what happens to make her come back? Uh, she. 
fails. I don't remember. <laughs> what did she do? She's like, like I once again, it's, it's very much like forgettable in that way. Yeah. It's just like, I know she comes back, obviously, the movie has to continue. But yeah. It's like, there's nothing that really happened like significant. I think yeah. we do get, I think when she's in the forest, we do get a vision of her. Mm -hmm. Um, and like the kid, like her mom, her mom, or something like that. Yeah, you um, get like we get flashes of her mom. We get flashes of well, we get flashes of an older woman calling her name. <laughs> we get flashes of these two little girls that we don't fully know who they are yet. Yeah. Um, because the forest does that, I think, in order to keep you there, plays tricks on your mind. Yeah, whatever. which you know, like then there was a thing too with this forest. The forest rules didn't fully make sense mm -hmm. of everything either. Yeah, yeah it, and it, it was a hodgepodge, man. It was a hodgepodge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think for the next few days, we just get her learning about the rules. Like you're not allowed to one uh, anybody outside the door at when the sunset dies. Um, you're not allowed to go up near the burrows. We see like um, I think one of them, possibly Madeline, type pointing and giving her the the four one one on everything that's going on. You're not allowed to go towards the burrows. You're not allowed to turn your back to the to the uh, to the mirror. Mm -hmm. She's learning all these rules over the next few days, next few weeks or whatever. And then I think one night sorry, one day, uh she's out with Daniel because I think it was interesting like each day like she would go, she would follow a different member of the bunker to kind of learn about them. Uh, learn their because each one of them has a role. He's mm -hmm. old, like Daniel was like the hunter, getting them food. Like we see him catch a fucking crow or something, and like as he's talking to uh, Mina, this again he stops the crow's neck and keeps keeps it moving. Yeah. Hey, right. you, you got to do what you got to do. You know, I'm, are you crow meat? All right, eat crow pie. It's delicious. Which is also interesting, knowing that what we found out later is like the fact that they have the possibility to go hungry mm -hmm. being where they are. Yeah. It threw me off a little mm -hmm. bit later, but yeah. Um, one day when she's out with Daniel, like uh, hunting with Daniel, whatever, she decides that, like, she because she keeps mentioning this fact that, like, um, because Madeline is the very much one once again, she's our insider to all this knowledge about the watchers, um, and the one that really enforcing these rules. And like, Mina's like, I, I don't want basically, I don't want to obey the rules anymore. And I think it was interesting because of the fact that we didn't get to know much about this character her character especially mm -hmm. i mean we didn't get to know much about any of the characters for the most part it was like so it was like it's these aren't like turns like I, I don't know this person so like their actions don't really if they don't make sense to me it's because of the fact that you haven't told me who this person is or told you know either they're, if they're acting on a character or like or they're acting in character or whatever it is and that was something with you know mina's character I mean, like, I could, you, you can't really figure her out when she's just like, I don't belong here. I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm better than this. I'm whatever. I'm a monster. I'm a bad person. I'm like, who are you, you yeah. little woman? You know, who's like, who, who is trying to act like other people? Because I have seen that you have this weird thing going on. Who are you as a character? And I think that the movie could have benefited a lot from that for sure, of just a little more fleshing out of its characters. But yeah, yeah. so she goes, um, with Daniel, she's like, um, she wants to find out what the what what a watcher looks like, basically, because they both of them say, in, uh, what's her name, uh, Yara and Daniel, they say they've never seen one of the watchers. Yeah, and so she she goes up to a burrow, and um, with Daniel's help, she like cl climbs down into the burrow, like he he basically tells her, uh, make sure you stay in the light, because yeah. obviously the the, the uh, watchers can't. So like yeah. she has a little um uh. uh Lighter. This is the second time a lighter would like, escape me. Uh, <laughs> you're, smoke, you're, you're too healthy. Do you, like, you got great mental health. You're doing push ups. You don't need that shit. All right. Get that shit out of here. All right. No, that's for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she had the lighter. She's usually have to like, like her way. And it's like she doesn't go too far in the burrow when she gets to the, um, gets inside. Um, mm -hmm. but she sees like just, a, I guess, a horde of just random items. Yeah. So she yeah. sees like a, a newspaper from like 1992. She sees a camcorder, like a, a like a teddy bear, and um, a bicycle. Mm -hmm. And so, so she takes a few of these things, the bicycle especially, back up with her, and they take it back to the to the the coop. And she just she tells uh, Madeline that she found it at, like some random random spot in the woods. She doesn't admit that she went to one of the burrows. Mm -hmm. And I think also 
I only know this because I read back on Wikipedia because at this point, when she was in the borough, I assumed we were going to see the creatures not cover my eyes because I'm close. <laughs> but apparently she does see one of the watchers and it gets, it burns itself in the in the sunlight or whatever. Is that what happened? So I remember so looking at it, like she sees something and she's calling Daniel and then we do see like a hand and it's like a human looking hand. It starts yeah. off with, like this weird gray black thing in which mm-hmm. you, you can't really tell it's called and then it becomes like a human hand and then she screams Daniel, and then the rope drops, and then it stops or something like that. Oh, great. So I don't. So it's possible. I don't really remember seeing that, but you know, I didn't close my eyes. But it's possible. I well, maybe it. maybe she saw the audience didn't. Maybe yeah, that's what it yeah, yeah, yeah. Stopping. Yeah. Like I said, I know I I averted my eye because I saw something <laughs> else at the time. So like yeah. I missed it, but <laughs> you just yawn <laughs> really big. You're like. If you close your eyes when you yawn, you can't see things. Okay. Yeah. So I just like so she brings all this stuff back, says that she found it randomly in the forest somewhere. Mm-hmm. And Madeline doesn't yeah. leave her, but they're like she's like fine. And um they're able to be being that the obviously you know, being like crafty, he's able to uh get hook the uh camcorder up to the TV. And also I think she took the bite because Madeline said that so obviously when they're learning the rules of the forest, all the point of no return markers or whatever, they're like there's we don't know how many they are, they're, but they're numbered mm-hmm. and marked. And it was like it's basically in a circle around that area. And if you go past there, you can't make it back to the um to the bunker in time or whatever. It's like it's like she said it's a half day's journey to the bunker or some shit like that. Why don't you just use hours, asshole? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, like just miles, kilometers even, you know, something. <laughs> See when the guy says it's a day's journey, what does that mean we throw on? Did you know yeah, I'm like, I run really fast. Is it not a day's journey for me? I don't know. <laughs> like, what does this mean? But anyway, she bought the bike and she was just like, I mean, we can't make it on foot outside a pass, but it was like maybe on a bike. But I'm just like, ma'am, that is a bicycle on a fucking forest. You might as well walk. Like, there's yeah. no... <laughs> Yeah. You can barely drive in this motherfucker. You gonna use a bike? What are we doing? Yeah, you know, okay. Well, good luck. But, you know, it's possible. It was like a off-road bike. You know, like a dirt bike. Well, it was not. It had a basket on it. <laughs> a basket and a bell. Okay, it wasn't yeah. going anywhere. It was for legally riding at best. Yeah. Could you imagine you have this the swarm of them chasing you? You're just like ding, 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 ding. As <laughs> <laughs> you go along. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah, so they looks up the camcorder to the TV, and they're like, "Okay, good. We're gonna set this outside so we can all get a look at one of, at what a washer looks like." Yeah, and so that night, um, like uh, yeah, they stand up. I'm not actually no, they're just waiting for the watchers to show up because usually they'll hear them and they'll know that they need to stand up in mm-hmm. front of the in front of the mirror. But that night they don't hear them at all. It was like it, this is very weird. And then randomly they get a knock on the door, and when they look, uh, it is. John, who we find out is the guy from the opening that got killed or got pulled into a burrow. Actually, we don't know what happened, but we just assume it's John knocking on the door, calling out for Sierra, saying, like, let me in, let me in. They're chasing me. I mean, we see on the TV that is hooked up to the camcorder. We just see his legs because I guess they sat it on the ground. So Sierra wants to open the door because I was like, we don't know how long John's been going. They, they assumed he was dead, but she had a and she wants to open the door for him, but uh, Madeline, obviously, the rule followers, like, nobody's allowed in. That door doesn't open after sunset. Mm-hmm. Clearly, the, either the force is playing tricks on you or the or the watchers are, but, like, that's not that's not John. And yeah. they're like, oh, but see, I was kind of, like, kind of pushing back. So Madeline says, ask him something that only John would know. And so she asked him, um, what book was I reading or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was funny to me because it was just like, but you ask a man that. I was like, ask me when your birthday is. I don't know that. Birthday. I don't know. Whoa, whoa. Birthday? I don't know that shit. I know a book though. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. That's what I thought. I was just like, oh, he's going to get it wrong. But regardless, <laughs> she just, she wanted him to die. Right, she just set him up for failure. But yeah, so she asked him a book because apparently they went to some bookshop in Dublin and he mm-hmm. got her this book because it reminded her, him of her. So yeah. he would definitely know what, what the book was. Mm-hmm. And so, like, he's just like, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Just let me in, let me in. They're, they're gonna get me. They're gonna kill me. Yeah. And so, um, she says, because like, he, obviously, he's being more frantic about it because he's about to be attacked by the watchers. So she says, there's a. She tells him that there's a camera at your feet, which obviously he did. You know, nobody knows. I guess they hid it. Uh, she says, there's a camera at your feet. I want you to bend down, pick it up, and show me your face to confirm who you are. 
Yeah. And I think bef- like he starts to, and once again, I read my eyes. Yes. I don't know exactly what happened, yeah. but I know we just you just hear um kind of loud noise. He gets attacked and dragged away. Well, you do see his face. It does look like him. You know what okay. I mean? It is like yeah, you see him. He's naked for some reason, but you do see him. Uh, so you're like, okay, that maybe that was him. But yeah, then he gets attacked and dragged away. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, after that, we do hear a bunch of the watchers outside, and they're very obviously very upset. Um, and they kind of like smack on the glass and crack it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this is where we get Madeline pushing back, and she was just like, "Because when when um when uh, what's her name, Mina and Daniel came back, Madeline says something's different. Like, did you see? Mm-hmm. Like, what did you see? Basically, because she yeah. knows what well, she's like. I know you didn't just find these things randomly in the forest. Like, you clearly went into one of the boroughs, which is a which is one of the rules that we're not supposed to do. So yeah, like, no, no. Did you what did you see down there? Like she keeps probing her about this. And um is it now when we get the I can't remember when the flashbacks come once well, again this movie was very long and also un yeah and unmemorable in a way. So it was just I can't remember exactly when things happened. Um mm-hmm. It's probably but, uh, a flashback of her as a kid. It's ca- it's coming up soon ish because okay. in, in the next big scene, you know, the next big event, she tells Daniel about it to get let in. So it's gonna okay. happen. Okay. 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 Yeah. So um maybe it, maybe it, when they were hiding. Okay. So uh Madeline returns the bike and like the def- oh, I guess whatever they had taken from the burrow, there she just throws them back down. Um and then we hear like uh, most of the past, I think it's winter now or something like that. It's getting colder. And we do see like the conditions of the, both the weather and being in, being cooped up in the coop has like all of them on edge. You see Madeline and Daniel fighting because Daniel, once again, it's winter time. So I assume there's less animals around. So he's mm-hmm. not as successful hunting. So when, and now they're all hungry. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, and then we see, uh, what's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Sierra? Uh, yeah, so we see on the ground for like in the in the coop, we see Mina because we see that she's an artist. So it's like she was just drawing. Mm-hmm. She had different drawings in her apartment, and then like she keeps a sketchbook with her. Yeah, and uh, she now she's drawing on the floor. Like basically, over the past few months, they've been um, marking the woods and mm-hmm. like for trails to the different points, uh, points of no return, a uh, post or whatever. And like she's also drawing a map on the on the floor. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of give them a, a, a sense of their bearings within the forest. And while she's drawing on the um, on the floor, we see uh, what's her name? See, I was like kind of sitting on a chair, looking at the looking at the window. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in the during the daytime you could see out, right? Yeah, during the daytime you could because it's one of those where it's like you know you look at a window and like when it's super bright inside, you know you can't really see out the window as easily, mm-hmm. but people can see in the window. Yeah, and so like that kind of premise, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so like she's looking out the window and then like randomly like Mina looks over and like both her no I guess was the bird gone or no? I thought the bird was gone. Yeah, the bird, I'm pretty sure the, the bird is just kind of there, you know, for the the whole movie and I think the bird yeah. might mean something, but it, it doesn't really do anything. And then uh so she's there drawing and then she looks up and then Sierra's gone. Because Sierra's sitting yeah. there and Sierra and like it was either Sierra or Mina, they were like, you know, Daniel and Madeline keep fighting, I can't stand it, because you know, they're yeah. clearly on edge. And then Mina is very despondent. And then yeah, see uh, you know, Sierra's very despondent. Mina looks away, looks back, and Sierra's gone all of a sudden. And mm-hmm. The door's open, which means she just kind of wandered off on her own. Yeah. yeah. So Mina chases Sierra, and you see Sierra. She's standing at one of the burrows. I don't know she's never jumping around. Right? She says, um, for the longest time, she believed that John was still alive, but that night mm-hmm. um, with the game quarter made her realize that he's gone. And yeah. like, she doesn't want to be, like, she might as well die too so that she can be with him. They're gone. What? Ha- oh, oh, that's what happened. So, right as she's about to jump into the into the hole, they hear screaming, and it's uh, mm-hmm. Daniel screaming. So, like they race the woods, and they see that Daniel has uh, Madeline tied up, and he's like, "I don't want to follow the rules anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, forget this." And like he just kind of runs off, and uh, Sierra follows him. Nina unties Madeline, and then they, they realize it's almost sunset. Yeah. Um, and so they start making their way back to the to the bunker, and uh, the doors close, and uh, what's it? Ma- Daniel and Ciara are inside, and they, uh, Daniel is like standing in front of the door, like refusing to open it, and like so, uh, Mina and Madeline are knocking on the outside, they, like let us in, let us in. Like obviously it's almost sunset. Uh, they're going to they're going to get us, and so 
uh, Madeline realizing that Daniel's not going to open the door, she they they start running and apparently she has this little this setup. This is like uh, some foliage and uh, like I think like, maybe a deer carcass or something like that. I couldn't really see. And, like, it. There's some like you know it was like rotted like you know roots and everything. It was like you know an upturned tree and it was like a little cave inside the tree yeah. almost to like you know give some protection and whatnot. And she's like, uh, hopefully, like the rotting or whatever will mask our scent. And so this is when we finally get uh, um, a peek at the creatures or whatever. So whatever, wherever they're sitting, they have a exact view to the window. Mm -hmm. And um, so the the a creature like um, kind of steps over because we're like you've seen like shadows of these creatures and they're very much like on all fours, very much like you know like very quick, mm -hmm. like under like a dollar or something like that. Yeah, uh, and so like the creature like kind of uh, steps over the tree that they're like they're uh, hiding in, and then it kind of walks over on all fours to like towards the window, and then it stands up, and you see it's a, a very slender frame, long hair, and it's mm -hmm. very very tall. I want to say like twelve, thirteen feet. Yeah, something. Something. yeah, yeah definitely that. a lot taller than a normal person. Yeah, yeah, but what like you said, very much humanoid. Mm -hmm. And then we once that one stands up and we see it, we see a, a bunch of other ones that kind of follow behind it. Initially on all fours, very quick, and then it kind of they stand up on two two feet. And I was like, okay, okay. this is like cool. And it wasn't a full look at the creature, mm -hmm. but like we're finally getting a peek behind, like what, yeah. what and this then, to see like all of them just kind of keep standing up slowly, one after the other. It was a cool scene. It was that yeah. was a cool scene that we had going on right there for sure. Yeah, and then so being that it like they had heard the creatures coming, both uh, Daniel and Ciara do what they normally do and just stand in front of the mirror, uh, <laughs> holding hands. And he was like, "It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Like, who, like who cares?" The watchers, we find it out. Or we not we find out, but the watchers are like, um, they notice that two are missing, so like they kind of freak out initially, mm -hmm. and then they all disperse. Uh, Madeline says they're, they're looking for us. They know that we're missing. And so they take this opportunity to run at the door again and like, Daniel, please let us in. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this is where we get kind of uh, Mina's backstory. So like, um, you know, she was a kid, or I want to say maybe 10 years old or something like that, uh, or probably younger, actually. Um, yeah. Well, actually, you know what's weird is, man, okay. So in the story, Mina, I think it's, you know, I read a summary where it said Mina is 28 years old, right? Okay. But 15 years ago means she would have been 13. Yeah. These mm -hmm. aren't 13 year old girls. They're Not like, all, yeah. eight, they're like eight to 10. You know what I mean? Yeah. For sure. They're bratty eight to 10 year olds. But yeah. Yeah. But like, uh, Mina has a twin sister. I think her name is Lucy or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Leading over like twins. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have missed the layups. Yeah. Oh God. Well, God, what is the symbolism here? I don't <laughs> yeah. relax. Yeah. This is in the high. There was no reason. I was saw a fucking coming with this yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so she has a twin sister. One day they're in the car with their mom and uh, her uh, Mina is sitting behind her mother and like she's like playing with her window and her mom was like, Can you please roll up your window? Like or whatever. It's like messing up my hair. Mm -hmm. The window is like messing up my hair. So initially Nina uh what is the window and then she pulls it down again and then like um mom is like, What what are you doing? Like roll the window like she's like kind of reprimanding her. Mm -hmm. And you hear Mina mark mimicking her mom. Yeah. And like, so wherever she says she says it back. And looking at it, it was like one of those things was like clearly this is important in a way, like the whole Mimic like uh, mimicking or something like that. I mean, and you look at it, they're mimicking because the creatures mimic. Yeah, so that was what yeah, they were doing for. Here. I think we're trying to do something. Yeah, but, uh, they were aiming for it. You know, it's they, later, you know. They, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. So uh, she starts mocking her mother, and then I guess her mom um, raises the window herself, like using the in the, in the front. Mm -hmm. And Nina like kind of sticks her fingers in the windows. Yeah, and like she starts screaming because her fingers are stuck in the window. And like her mom turns around, like to like see what's going on. And as she turns around, she gets she runs into a truck or something. Like that. Yeah. And we see that like that's how her mom died. Like mm -hmm. so she blames herself, which she should. I don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's trauma servers. You know, yeah. some people theorists was like it was your fault. You were an asshole, bratty kid. Yeah. But, so yeah, you know, you can, mistakes were made. And yeah, then her <laughs> twin sister also has like two cuts along her cheek mm -hmm. like that too, because yeah. she was also in the accident. Yeah. So it was like, like I said, I think it's one of those things like knowing our trauma on film and like the, with the twist and like all these layers to the storytelling and stuff like that. 
the whole movie, I was I guess I was trying to guess the thing. Sure. So, yeah. and, like initially, I thought maybe her mom didn't die, but her sister died mm-hmm. in a way, and it was just like because I've seen a few movies like that where like um, I think it was a, one recently that came out a few years ago. It was just like the twin brother died, but like the twin who mother the creepy one. Yeah, like the, the, the creepy one called Mother, yeah. like where there was a surgery and then like the yeah, yeah, that, okay, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. that was Mother. So it was like, you know, once again, it was like seeing that, or once again, I see that twin thing was important for some reason. Yeah, it did. It wasn't like you said. There was a lot of build up to look, flimsy payoffs and no payoffs at all. It yeah. makes sense. It's because yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, okay, why is it? Why is she a twin? What, what, what's yeah. the? What are the? What is the use? For that in this story, it's thing. because ever since The Shining, twins have inherently been known to be creepy, and that's about all. Evil, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's duality. It's the good and the bad, the light and the dark type of thing. Yeah. Uh, but so, yeah, so this is what we. So she tells us to Daniel, saying how like that's why she thinks she's a bad person, which once again I agree. Uh, <laughs> but, so eventually, after she's vulnerable with her, she's vulnerable with him, he lets them in. Um, and right on time, because when they close the door, we see that the, the watchers see that they're back. And this is where I think Mina, no, no, not Mina, Madeline kind of says, I've told you nothing but the truth. Cause I think that's what it is. Like with her enforcing these rules mm-hmm. and them not being able to prove whether she's right or wrong or not. That's what came in with the question. She was like, I've always told you the truth. Now I did hide a few things from you, some of the truths, but yeah. I've always told you guys the truth. So then she, as they're standing there waiting for the re- reaction from the watchers she does tell them what the watchers are yes um and they are she calls them changelings uh shapeshifters and then she says fairies and i was just like come on hey, there are so, creepy fairies out there bro i know <laughs> but <laughs> like I, said, I think this movie was for them even though it was a i guess it was a very much grounded horror right yeah and and even wow. though like the, the mystical forest in a way but it was like for the most part so there's supernatural happening kind of this entire time. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, but yeah, then you get these like fairy fae folk mixed in and, you know, then th- what really was like silly to me, I found, is when they were running later and then there's like the other door and they're like, now it's time for more exposition in the yeah. middle of you running through this forest. Right like, now? Right now? Yeah, like now? Now's not the time. Yeah. But yeah, so Madeline tells them about like how uh, changelings and fairies used to live with humans when there was a war, yada yada yada. Yeah. We don't get too much exposition, but we just learn what the what the watchers are finally. And like that's what I, I think I said this to you immediately as we left the movie. I feel like it took too long for them to answer questions, and by the mm-hmm. time they did, I was interested. Yeah, and then I, I wasn't interested, and I also wasn't. I was underwhelmed with the information that I was provided with. So it was like you got you got hit on with a one two punch, and mm-hmm. you know we we're just like. I don't, first of all, I don't like what you just said to me. <laughs> and it was <laughs> But yeah, so I have so then the I think the uh the watchers start attacking the attacking the bunker. We see them like kind of break into the door. Uh, we hear them talking as uh John and Mina are like kind of using um some of the some of the dialogue that's been used by the full our four main cast. Mm-hmm. Um back at them and then like also while this is happening we hear like the, the bunker being like like they're hitting the bunker time for every last time for right then and madeline is giving more exposition about the fact that it was like the changelings basically are using these four as an experiment to in order to mimic humanity mm-hmm. like clearly so but like, she said the first time that she saw one it looked like someone that she knew but it was like the eyes weren't right and like so that's what they've been doing they've been keeping them here in order to properly mimic them in order to infiltrate into society if they were able to break out of the forest. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why we hear them talking like Daniel and Sierra and Madeline and uh, Mina. And so as all this chaos is happening outside, uh, one of the rugs gets like pulled up on the floor and they see that there's like this, um, it's like a, a loose, I don't, not a loose floorboard, but like a loose panel in the mm-hmm. floor. Yeah. And so Daniel starts beating on it. They pull it up and they see that there's a door. And like so, they open the door just in time. They they open the door on the floor, and uh, Mina says, "I'm going down." So like they all of them follow her, and then the last minute they close the door just as uh, the watchers or the changelings sorry break into uh, the bunker. Mm-hmm. And so now they're in the, the bunker of the bunker because Doomsday Preppers are going to Doomsday Prep, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and. They see right away that there's um there's a bunch of food down there and supplies. There's like like a bedroom and like a bed setup. 
nobody is abandoned, but there's clearly somebody that lived here for a very long time. And Nina goes over to a computer, um, turns it on, and she can't access the internet, but there are a bunch of files, uh, like basically like logs uh, for like 300 days. And like, so she goes to the, to the first day and she just kind of gets a, a, a report from the professor who had been mentioned by uh, Daniel at one point. I don't know how. Yeah. I think they all kind of mentioned the the professor because you you see like on the back of like the um the love layer it even had like property of the professor. Yeah, yeah. But he yeah. like yeah you're right you're right. But it was just like I feel like Daniel had mentioned him like as if he they knew him or something like that, mm -hmm. which was which was um, weird. I, yeah, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like yeah. during that during that those initial few days when like he they she's uh, learning about them and then like she's following each one of them around. I feel like he had mentioned them because he, he mentions the professor as if well, like he was a person that he knew. But I I guess that's how I read it. But yeah, anyway, yeah. so we finally get a, a look at the professor and he talks about how he's a, he's a professor at some university who's who very much believes in the uh existence of fairies mm -hmm. and like so he built this bunker and like so we watched a bunch of videos and i was i made the jokes it was like the videos are way too short to be a daily log that's <laughs> like yeah log the fucking day what is going on it's, at least the dude from avatar was like it was full logs maybe like my whole day <laughs> this dude was like 10 seconds but that's it i'm tired I'm going to bed. <laughs> and so they start watching video after video i i assume in order but we don't know yeah. um and we just learn about his he discovered the the um the changelings and he created the bunker using labor from the around, around the surrounding villages in Ireland. And he didn't pay these people at all. He just kind of, after a day's work, he had them eat their dinner outside. So they, they yeah. get back into the bunker and the changelings would just murder all of the, the all of the, the workers. Yeah. Um, and he kept doing this until the, the bunker was complete. Which is like Jesus fucking Christ? Is nobody noticing? Yeah, you know, right, we're yeah. just like wait. But I guess you, you, at one point, I can't remember what town she was driving through. There was a bunch. Oh, like she was at a gas station actually. Mm -hmm. When she before, obviously before she gets trapped in the bunker, and like there was a bunch of like missing signs. Um, Fair, yeah, all of them, yeah. That's yeah. when she went by. I mean, I just thought those were people who went like hiking in the woods or some dumb shit like that. Oh, you know what I mean? yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah, for fair. But yeah, so. We learned obviously that the, the professor was like studying them and he noticed that like they were mimicking him. So like they'd come up to the window, they wouldn't do anything, they'd just stand there studying. Mm -hmm. And then he <clears throat> and one of some of his later logs, he says that he was able to capture one. Uh he said he did the unthinkable, he was able to capture one in order to properly study it and maybe like oh. Cause it, I think you talked about like them them replacing like lost ones and things like that. Mm -hmm. And in his last video on like day three hundred, he says he realizes his errors. I guess there's no way to properly I guess train or domesticate these these uh, creatures. So he's going to kill the one that he had captured and then kill himself. And he tells he says that whoever finds this, if you find it, he tells him a way to get out. There's a a uh, a bolt. Mm -hmm. uh, on a river that are like near outpost, um, like one thirty four or something like that. And, um, you do, that's the way to get out of the forest. I mean, he says, and if you make it out, go to the university and burn all my research about, um, the changelings because he doesn't want anybody else to, to, to follow in his footsteps. Mm -hmm. And so he uh, doesn't turn off the, the video, which was interesting, I guess once again, movie purposes, yeah, but, like, yeah. <laughs> he climbs out of his sub bunker and we hear two shots and then the camera goes off. And so now they all realize that oh there is a way we need to we need to follow that that path to get out of here. And they all kind of agree. Um mm -hmm. that for like that night we see like um Daniel and what's her name? Sierra uh, Daniel with Sierra like dancing or whatever. And like this is where you're saying I can't yeah, I think because my, Mina was honest with him and Bruno about her mom. Uh, Samuel randomly, now it's not as random now, actually. But like, now, like, I don't know if I just talked myself through it, but it was just like, mm -hmm. she was from Bruno with him. He tells her about his dad, and his dad is like a very violent alcoholic. Yeah. Now he had opened his nose several times and a few ribs when he was drunk. So, like, Daniel kind of ran away because he was like, if I don't run away, I'm, I'm probably going to kill my dad. Yes. And so he says this, and then, like, oh, no, he doesn't say it to her. He says it to uh, Sierra. Sierra, and they're dancing. Yeah. Everybody knows, because he kind of, they alluded that he had a crush on Sierra a little yeah, bit, yeah, yeah. too. 
And it was funny. What was it? Yeah, like Sierra volunteered that in the beginning of this movie of being like, my husband, John, used to think he had a bit of a crush on me, but that's just silly. John's out there and he'll be back soon. And I was like, <laughs> thank you for the exposition dump. Yeah. Right, once again, I said the Shyamalan is a very better dialogue. I'm seeing yeah, exactly. that. It's an intro pattern. Yes. That is not how the human beings really ever work. That's how AI does it. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> That's how Chainsley would do it, actually. Nah, but yeah, so she tells him that um, he doesn't have to go home. He can stay with her or whatever. And uh, the next morning, uh, they climb out of the bunker, the sub-bunker, and they see that, like, the the whole room that they were in, like, the glass is shattered. All of the furniture is gone. Like, they, the, the Chainslings, like, tore up this place. So mm-hmm. they can't, st- I mean, I guess they could always stay in the bunker, but they can't stay where they were in the coop. And so, like, they all set out um, towards uh, Outpost 30, uh, 134 to find the um, to find the boat. And Madeline says, like, um, just make sure you continue walking forward because, once again, we, I feel like they forgot about it until right now, like, when they left the bunker again. But it was just, like, that the forest is, like, tries to play tricks on you and, like, like makes you kind of insane. Mm-hmm. So she was like, don't believe anything you see. Just keep walking straight. And like so they made it past uh the point of no return and then they keep going. At some point, I think we they do start seeing like uh, you do see like random two twin girls. Mm-hmm. I think Mina sees her mom and stuff like that, but they just keep walking forward. And then they get into this huge like I guess it's another burrow type of thing that's sealed off to like some crest yeah. that has um I guess fairies on it, like what you like you said earlier, like Remedy Madeline gives more aspects. Like, we don't care. we know about the fairies. I mean yeah. that's the whole backstory. Why do we need more information? Door. Yeah. This is the door that they were put in. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, yeah, there was apparently they're like fairies and humans lived alongside each other as furries that were seen as gods until like, humanity didn't want to like deal with them anymore. So there was a huge war and then they were all sealed deep underground. Um, and then, like, I guess initially they, they had to burrow their way back to the surface. And so, like, they find the, they see the river or whatever, they find the boat. Where, as uh, Madeline, Mina, and Sierra are walking towards the boat, Daniel kind of sees something in the forest, and it's John. And he's, like, badly injured, so Daniel goes to help him. And the girls are in the boat, they turn back, they see Daniel with John, and they're like, obviously, that's not fucking John, dumbass. We, yeah. we all know this. You dumb fuck. What yeah. are you doing that? Uh, I guess there wasn't room on the boat. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know what? This guy needs to die. I was like, yeah. all right, cool, I guess. <laughs> and so uh, it's not John as the changeling, so like, he changes his claws to scratch his leg, and eventually like, slit his throat. Mm-hmm. And then the, um, all the changelings kind of come out of the forest, and we see that they're like, very human, or very pale skin, like they're like white eyes, yeah. almost. Uh, as they're rolling away, uh, Mina says, that can they not swim? And Madeline just says, oh, no, they're just not allowed to leave the, yes. the forest. Which and I feel like they should have just left it if they're not allowed to swim. Yeah. It's just, it's, I don't know. Yeah. What, was the, what was the plan? They can't leave the fucking forest. What's the point in mm-hmm. watching humans? Where are you going? Oh, fair. Yeah, for like later or whatever. I mean, that's what you want. You, well, some kind of magical curse. Your magic was there back in the day. It's like they could always tell us, like, oh, I want to graduate. I just really, want, I really like learning. Right. No. Really, like, <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. it was odd. Um, but yeah, so there are three here, the three women escape, they fall asleep at some point. When they wake up, uh, Mina sees like a bus going over a bridge, so they they wait on the they wait on the bridge for the bus. Um, I mean, I think it was this was interesting to me. It was like it could have been possibly it was like they don't believe that they're they're truly safe type mm-hmm. of thing, or like they can't trust. A human being because it might be a change in I thought possibly that's what they were going with it. Not really, but it would have, it would have been an interesting take on it. But anyway, so they hop on the bus, uh, they drive into the city or whatever. Mina tells the group that um, the next day, like once they get back, or once they get to civilization, she's going to go to the university to destroy the professor's um, research. And so they all agree. Uh, a few days later, she heads to the university pretending to be. Um, Pretending professors like me, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. And so, like, uh, so we find out that um, the professor, even though I can't... So I assume that he was doing research in, like, 2009. I don't know what the current year is. I mean, right? I, I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. I, I don't know if it's a contemporary time or whatever, but it was just, like, the lady just says he hasn't been back in a year or, like, in a long time. Like, normally they would have cleared out his office, but some... Some students like put together some money to keep her preserved or whatever. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm just curious as to how fucking long do they keep this damn office for this guy? Yeah, right. Like, how much money did they raise for all of that, too? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, it's, good. it's one of those things where, like, you open up the box and you refuse to answer the questions and just, or just ignore it. No, you can't. You can't. Uh, Not a good uh, movie-making technique. Just say. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, she goes into his office. She uh, finds uh, his box of research and she goes through it. She hears a recording about how, um, like, we, I mean, Madeline, I said it earlier, but it was just, like, uh, humans and fairies had lived alongside one another. Like, they worked with each other. They even, like, sometimes made it. And then those halflings... Um, like existed like mm-hmm. half human half fairy and then like she kind of sees like a mural of it on his wall and like when she's going through the box she's, she's looking through a bunch a few pictures or whatever we don't see what she sees but she sees something she calls and once she leaves she calls uh what's your name ciara mm-hmm. saying i need to talk to you so she takes a cat out to ciara's house um and she's greeted by ciara and she's just like um so i went i found his research um, and she tells her kind of more information about what she found. And then she shows her the pictures and she's like, um, we see in the pictures, there are pictures of the professor and his wife mm-hmm. who looks a lot like Madeline. Yeah. And so, Ooh, interesting. Um, yeah. yeah. And she, finds, and this is one of those things where like, I think it was like, I was trying to, you're trying to say the answer before somebody else or before you get told. So I was just like, oh, no, no. I was trying to wrap the movie in my head before the movie gave me the information because it was like too fucking long. Yeah. But yeah, so we find, she finds out that Madeline was nice as a professor here. You know, so I'm like, oh, maybe that's why, maybe she worked with him. That's why she knew so much about him. But she did mention that she was there voluntarily early, like when they, when they were learning about one another. Like mm-hmm. she, had, she knew about, she taught history, but it was like a lot of, also to do with like folklore and legends and stuff like that and so like she was there in the bunker voluntarily to study to research the um the the uh, changelings so we find out that oh sorry mina finds out that madeline was a professor's wife and then when she did a little bit more digging she found out that the woman known as madeline whatever i can remember her last name had died in like 2002 of cancer Mm -hmm. several years before the before the professor because like i said he entered the bunker they entered the forest in 2009 yeah. yeah, and, and so like, she's like, if they can like change form and become people, think of all the implications of what this means. And like, yeah. yeah, and so of like this, it's basically implied that the the professor had done. He, I guess, he become obsessed with changelings because of he wanted to, um, I guess, catch a changeling to replace his wife. Oh, yeah. wait, wait, really? I just thought that he kind of developed a weird fetish after she died, and he just wanted to get some of that sweet changeling, you know. <laughs> not allowed outside. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, I just want to invite you to things. <laughs> <laughs> you think you can do these things? You can't, Nemo. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So basically, we find out that uh, Madeline. So the Madeline they they knew or whatever that was in a bunker was most likely a change. Yeah. Um, and it, I think it was also too. It was like you. <sighs> They kept, they gave you so much information at the end where it was just like, you could have been sprinkling this throughout the damn film. Like, you to expose it for five to ten minutes at the end of the film, mm-hmm. all of like, it's it's not like it's fucking uh, what the usual suspects or something like that, right? Yeah. Where it's like, you're, you get it and then you go back and see like where it was. At the, it was like, just you're just giving all this information away at the end mm-hmm. because you didn't know how to properly tell the story. Yeah. But yeah so, as she's telling Aralus, we see someone pull up. And it's Ciara, so she's like, "Oh shit, you must be Madeline." Yeah, and so uh, fucking, she swears fucking uh, like Madeline. I mean, sorry, yeah, who is being who's um changed into Ciara slams what's her name, uh, Mina into the wall. Mm-hmm. Ciara comes in, she catches up uh, some hands. Too. Yeah, <laughs> she gets up. Yeah, and then um, uh, what's it? What's the name? Uh, once uh, Ciara gets knocked out, Mina and uh, Mina and Madeline start fighting. She starts changing into different people, saying how once again it was so much information, but it was like one that she she was very much different, right? Like mm-hmm. so she was shunned and outcast by the other watchers. Yeah. And she couldn't tell why. And I think it was because of the fact that she could walk in the daylight. Yeah, she was on the day walker. Yeah. Yeah. So she was following day walker, so she was and um yeah, so she was shunned, and then like she talks about the fact that like the um, 
the humans uh banned like banished them to the to the underground so they had to burrow way back up so there's this huge hatred of reality but we're gonna we're gonna come back and we're gonna take over and, and stuff like that and then Mina's like basically saying like why do you think you're different like why do you why do you think you're able to walk in the daytime why the professor was trying trying to um like trying to uh like well like, if you didn't do anything to change you like you were changed before that or whatever there was a slight pause because before then like you had the whole um the madeline becomes mina and is like i'm yeah. going to take over your life think about it you're a terrible person you killed your mother you don't even want to live your life i'll just live no one will care at all i'll become you mm -hmm. and then she starts that but yeah that's when mina's like why do you think you're different what's going on i've yeah. read the research i know things and then yeah so yeah you find out that uh what's her name madeline the changeling is is a halfling and that's why she's able to walk walk during the day because at one point humanity and fairies uh were so close that they, they you know procreated and, and loved one another and that's what the professor wanted to do the whole time he was just trying to bring that back and so basically Dina's like um you have to let go of your hatred of humanity because it's half yourself like, equating that to also like her hating herself because of her like her killing her mom and stuff like this and yeah. i was just, I'm seeing it now, but it was like, was love the cure the whole time? Ugh. It was the power of friendship that brought us all together the whole time. The goddamn anime? What yeah. are we doing? It was awful. And then she gets her fucking wings. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Once she, once she learns to let go of the hatred of humanity, she's able to like, experience her full self. And she gets her wings. So they talk about the fact that fairies had wings at one point, but they lost them oh my um, God. when they were banished to the to the um to the underground. It's a wonder. Yeah. They, it's a wonderful life, this. That's what they did. You know what I mean? Like, Burr, congratulations, Orange gets wings. Orange, good for you. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? Is this and so yeah, so uh, what's her name? Uh, Madeline flies off or whatever, and then we get more exposition. I guess Muna is telling the story to her sister. I guess yes. Possibly, maybe that's the framing yeah, of the hey, story. You know what? You're right. That, that shuts me right the fuck up about my first point. <laughs> she's <laughs> talking to her sister the whole time. I, yeah, yeah, so we see that she's been she's been reunited with her sister. Yeah. We see that her sister still has two scars from the cuts from the. And I was just like, oh, really? With that. That's how you know her. for Dakota Fan. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it was just like so, yeah, she's relaying this story about uh, the changes in her experiences in the in the forest um, to her sister. And she says, we see, she says that um, uh, Madeline is still out there. And it, it kind of implied like some fucking sequel where like there's other halflings among us or whatever. And it was like, how? Yeah. Yeah, never mind. It's one of those things where you can't open the box and not answer the fucking question. Or like give me some yeah. hint as to the answer. What are we doing? Also, oh, like, yeah, she talks about like uh, Madeline being out there, sometimes a little girl or a, a guy or whoever it is, um, just following her, watching her. And uh, so we see outside of that window where Mina's talking to her sister. Outside of the window is a little girl with red hair staring yeah. at her. And um, then the movie ends. Woo! That was the yeah. movie. Yeah. <laughs> what an ending. You know, it really fun. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. Uh, yeah, at the end of every review, we always have to go back to our original rankings. Mike, you gave this a two out of five. What are you thinking? I'm going to stick. I like, I was saying, we had so much negative to talk about it. I think on, on the kind of storytelling, but I think the performances were, like I said, just fine. I can't really fault any of the performances. I think the cinematography was really great. It looked really good. I like the creature design. The set was very interesting. Because like I said, I think it made you feel claustrophobic in, in that same in that same vein that the characters were. So I kind of appreciated that. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, I think it's just the story. Um, was fumbled, you know, and like I said, I think I tell you was I think one of my key jobs was to be to punch up scripts yeah. or trailers or something like that because so often such good ideas are uh, are fumbled in execution when in Hollywood. Yeah, so it's, I feel like what this story was it was just like it was a very interesting one because uh, it could honestly it could have been like uh, if I would have changed it it would have been like the ending of um, Ex Machina okay. in a way where like um, you don't know which Mina left the forest type of thing, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think I guess uh, uh, Elliot, uh, what is it, Annihilation did that. Okay. So, yeah. Literally, same shit. But like, I think I would have done it like that in mm -hmm. a way. But yeah, I feel like a lot of people, well, you're learning so much about halflings and stuff like that in the last 15 minutes of the movie. How is that when you relay all this information? It should have been done either in the middle or at the top, or, you know. So, and I think the storytelling was like, um, um, 
maybe my biggest gripe with this movie. But yeah, so I'm I'm gonna stick with the two. I might I could do Laura, but I'm I, like I said, it's, it's somebody's um directorial than you. And also, I feel like her name alone is like giving me pause. So <laughs> I'm trying to take all of the way and just kind of look at this project in a in a silo. So I'm I'm gonna stick with the two. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I'd like to start this off uh, with an apology. Uh, in my George Bailey, It's a Wonderful Life impression, uh, I said Lawrence. The angel's name is Clarence, you know. So basically, Madeline became Clarence and got her wings. So I'd like to apologize for that. As for rankings, no, this is still good. It's a one and a half out of five. Uh, I'm not changing that at all. It's There was some potential for good, and there were some interesting ideas and it just got fumbled. And actually, it's, it's interesting uh, that you said that in like two about like, you know, punching up scripts or looking at the end or like editing because you look at a lot of movies and like, I've, you know, I've heard, I don't have personal experience of this, but that like a lot of times these movies, when they're done, they're kind of hot messes. And then it's the editor who comes in and then fixes everything and makes the movie truly phenomenal. And that's why mm -hmm. like, behind every phenomenal director, it's funny behind like every, um, you know, Scorsese and behind every like phenomenal male director, there's a badass female editor behind that like takes this movie and like you're like, all right, let's actually make this make sense now. Uh, so maybe this is something that in editing could have been fixed or a little, or again, I think it really needed to be stick with one message, flesh it out a little bit more, really go into like, if we need to go more into the trauma of Mina and go with that. I'm curious how the book is, you know, like, the book must have been pretty decent for it to get the movie adaptation, so maybe the book is better. I don't know. The, the, the book has to be better. Let's be real there. But, you know, like, so we go from there. Oh, uh, yeah, so one and a half out of five for me. Again, directorial debuts are hard. The fact that this movie was made as a whole is great. It's, you know, more power to, uh, you know, Ishina Night Shyamalan for making a movie. Uh, and I'm still, you know, the next thing she comes out with, I will see it in theaters. I just hope she learns and makes a much better product because of it. So again, thank you so much for listening, everybody. We are the Meddling Kids. Uh, you can reach out to us at at Meddling Kids on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, or you can email us at kids at gmail.com. Excuse me. Hang up. Mike, how can they reach out to you? On Instagram at Days from Legendary. Love it. And you can reach out to me at at Hunt 77 on Twitter and Instagram or hunt.comics on uh, Instagram and TikTok. Oh, and edwardhuntwriting.com is my website. Uh, in the meantime, everybody, we'll see you next week with a brand new movie. That's all there. Bye.